glory and praise to the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Welcome to the third day of our journey from wilderness to the Calvary. My dear, dearly beloved of God, today's readings invites us to reflect on the fasting. Every religion has a practice of fasting. Some do fasting for self-satisfaction, others for recognition, and some others to glory or give glory to God. Today, the readings invites us to make a fasting or fast or examine the kind of fasting that we are doing. In the first reading, taken from the book of Isaiah, Isaiah clearly tells us what kind of fasting that God really desires from us. What kind of fasting that God wants from us or expects from us. My dear beloved of God, all those who fast for themselves or for those to please others have no reward. Their fasting goes in vain. But then, all those who fast to give glory to God and all those who have an intention of fasting with almsgiving and at the same time with a prayer, their fasting has a fruit in doing the fasting. And that's why we read in the first reading where Isaiah tells us two things that all those who do such kind of fasting to please God and these people will experience the light of God in them and healing will spring up in their lives what a beautiful thing my dear people of God the fasting that we do to please God and not to please man and not for selfish self-satisfaction and that fasting will shed the light of God unto us, which, he, which means to say that God's eyes will be focused onto us. And secondly, the healing will flow into our lives. And then again, the same fact is revealed to us in the gospel, where the Pharisees and scribes come to Jesus and say, the disciples of John the Baptist fast, and why not your disciples? And Jesus has a clear-cut answer to them, saying, now you fast because you have a reason. But as long as this bridegroom, I am with them, they need not fast. Why, when God is with them, they have to fast? My dear brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus, the presence of Jesus with us makes us to get joy or to be filled with joy. And that's why the psalmist says, You have made known to me the path of your life. You will fill me with joy in your presence, with eternal pleasures at your right hand. And then the second grace that we have when God is with us is that we may have a rejoicing heart. That's what we clearly read in the letter to Saint Corinth, letter, second letter to Corinthians, chapter 6, verses 10. We may be sorrowful, yet always rejoicing. We may be poor, yet making many rich, as having nothing and yet possessing everything. And this is the beauty of God having with us. My dear brothers and sisters, let's just reflect on these words. We may be sorrowful, but when God is with us, we always rejoice. We may be poor, but yet we always make ourselves rich when we have the presence of God. We may have nothing, but when we have the presence of God, we possess everything. Dearly beloved of God, as we are in the third day, of the Lent. 
Let us strive to fast, not to please others, not for our self-satisfaction, just for the namesake, but rather to please God, to give glory to God by attaching this fasting with arms giving, with prayer, and by giving our hand to those people who are in need. Remember, the righteous people, the righteous fasting of people of Nineveh brought mercy to the whole region. May our righteous fasting bring down the blessing of God and may God look upon all of us and bless us. We have a beautiful diet where I've read somewhere which says, eat your words, swallow your pride and digest God's teaching. Let this be our diet during these days of fasting. Amen.